Hey, welcome everyone to the ARCHICAD User Monthly Webinar for July 2021, where we'll focus on ARCHICAD 25, as well as the work of a couple of special guests. Let me know that you can hear me and see my webcam image. You can communicate through the questions area in GoToWebinar, but also say where you're calling in from. Um, and uh, I'll say hello. Uh, if you are a member of my Archicad training or coaching programs, you can also use Slack, um, work, Slack workspace uh, for, I guess we'll probably do it. I'm just trying to arrange my screen here. Um, let's see, don't need that here. All right, I see a lot of people saying hello. And so, uh, all right, Todd. Mario, Steve, Paul from Colorado, Mar Mario from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Hey, calling in from South America. That's great. Todd from Des Moines, Richard in Bermuda. So we have the Caribbean. Um, Ian from Scotland, Rick from New Jersey, Patrick from Seattle. Okay, Andrew from Boise. All right, Christina. Yeah, so. Uh, I'm just going to pick out a few others just from different places. So Pete at Fife in Scotland. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see, Mike, you're asking what the what's the member's other option to log into if you have access to Slack, if you're in the Archicad training program or the um, Archicad coaching program, you know, we have the Slack discussion area and I will be at least paying attention to that as well. Um, and Joe, Joe Bumbre from England, Gustavo from Miami. Okay, all right. So a few others who said hello. Don't see anyone from down under saying hello. Um, it's pretty early, like 6 a.m. in Melbourne, I think, something like that. But we may get a few of you in there. All right, um, and let me just check in the Slack workspace here. We'll uh, we'll use the I guess coaching calls area if you are going to use that um, Slack workspace. Okay, we have about 100 people on the line right now. A few more coming in right at the moment, so we'll get started. There is Namar Allen. Let me go and make him a panelist. So he's one of our special guests. Thank you for arriving. Um, there, okay. So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna have a little fun looking at ARCHICAD 25, new features, talking about project migration strategies. So basically, how do you migrate projects from 24 or from earlier versions? Um, and uh, you know, talk about both the practical impact of Graphisoft's changes in 25, as well as the strategic impact, meaning in, the world of software and software developers like our, like Graphisoft, um, some of the changes that they made really may not affect you, but will affect you indirectly because it positions ARCHICAD in a somewhat different way. Um, so we'll talk about that. I have two special guests. I'll introduce them um, in a little bit. Uh, one is Namar Allen from uh, Uganda, um, who's a young architectural graduate um, who has been developing a little bit of a reputation on YouTube with some very excellent tutorial videos. Um, and uh, then an old client of mine uh, named uh, Steve Nickel from Colorado, who uh, does some beautiful design in the mountain vernacular. So he's in the Colorado Rocky Mountain area and uh, makes beautiful models from those designs. And we'll take a look at a couple of his projects. So. First question for you, have you access to ARCHICAD 25? So if you're on subscription, you know, ARCA Plus or whatever it's called in your area, um, then you have access because the day that they announced ARCHICAD 25, July 8th, I think it was, um, they also said ARCHICAD 25 is here. Here's the new features and click here to download it. So this may be the first time that I've seen that. Um, you know, I was a reseller for 20 years and we used to have the announcement and then it would be shipping on a certain time and the box would ship from Graphisoft and 
you know, it would take a little while, take usually some weeks. Uh, and, uh, you know, even last year, I think it was an announcement saying it was coming and then it was available. Um, this year, they didn't mention a word about it. So there was a non-disclosure, I'm sure, for all the resellers and, you know, the people involved um, said no one would talk about what's new uh, until they said, hey, it's here. <clears throat> now, on a practical basis, it doesn't really matter. Did they do a good job? Are there things that you are going to benefit from? What do you need to, new, uh, to know to take advantage of it? That's you know, my job, um, obviously, that I'm taking on um, on behalf of you and other ARCHICAD users to say, um, well, here's my take on ARCHICAD 25. Now, while I go through this, I'm going to actually bring up one of our special guests. Um, so, Namar um, Allen is uh, here. I can see that your uh, microphone is live. Are you there? Hello. Okay. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, can you want to put it on your webcam? Oh, let me try to share. Okay. Now, the oh, reason yes. why can, can you see me? Namar, aside from the fact that as yeah, a yes, please. this is your first time on the ARCHICAD user monthly webinar, um, and uh, you're maybe from one of the furthest away, you know, in terms of being Africa, uh, Uganda, um, but you had a, a, a video where you did some um, reactions to ARCHICAD 25, and I thought it was very charming. I'm going to bring it up on screen um, now. So how are you doing, Namar? Uh, I'm fine. Maybe you. Um, Greetings, everyone who is around here. Yeah. So um, I'm going to bring this up on screen here. Let me share my screen. Um, ooh, that's, uh, well, that's not the one. I, that's not the one I wanted. Um, it's where is it? Popular uploads, Arcad 25 impressions. There we go. Okay, that's the one. Okay, so let me bring up <clears throat> my screen so you all can see that. All right, so you should all be seeing Namar on screen in front of this uh, Apple store. Um, and uh, so if you haven't had a chance to check out uh, Namar's channel, Nalitech Studio, is that how you pronounce it? Yes, Nalitech Studio. Okay, awesome. Um, so, some great tutorials. Well, this is not a tutorial. This is one where, um, if I just sort of jump a little bit, um, you can see he's uh, reacting to it and, um, you know, just looking at the video. And we're going to do a similar thing right now. But I love, uh, there's one where you just uh, cover your... Um, Let's see, where is it, if I can find it? Um, yeah, about the... Um, let's see. Before then. So it's when you're talking about the um, uh, the elevations and how you, you had created a whole surface textures. Uh, I'm not finding it here. I think you do a cutaway to one of your other videos where you... Um, yes, uh, yes, it, it was uh, a video before. A little it was bit just more. before that. Yeah, okay. Yes, before um, that. All right, there, there, okay. So, yes, yes. I, I love this because um, uh, we're all human beings. We all have our reactions, and you know, there's the frustrations about things, and you know, the things that uh, make you mad, whatever. And uh, you know, you made a wonderful little tu tutorial saying since we can't get surface textures on our elevations, God, why did they? Do, why don't they do this? So you figured out, you know, some ways to be able to get that effect. But now, you know, that's one of the cool things about the new features. So, what are the what are three features that you find most interesting about uh, 25? Yeah, the very first one is actually those textures. I was really intrigued when I saw how easy they made it that we do not have to go through the old way of uh, first taking things to other sheets like the ground floor or even a new independent work worksheet. 
but now it's easy to integrate them in sections and elevations. That's that's by far my favorite one. And mm -hmm. the next one is the being able to work with the openings tool, because mm -hmm. currently they have added a new feature where you create custom shapes, which was not the case before. So that's the second one. And the final one that I do like is the new uh, uh, way in which you can navigate uh, those uh, between 2D and 3D, because it would be frustrating. You select something and you lose the selection in, in, in another view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here is, for example, and this is uh, what, what uh, is being seen behind um, Namar's uh, you know, video. This is actually Graphisoft's video that he's, he's just playing. Um, so we're going to take a look at the new features here, but it's selecting something in 3D. I think it's this this object right here, um, this pipe, and then going to the plan, and there it is still selected. And I'm sure we've all had experience where you've selected something in one view and, you're, and you want to figure out where it is in that other view or which one it is, and uh, it can be challenging. Um, so yeah, those uh, I agree, those three are probably the most directly um, useful, uh, you know, just things that I'll appreciate um, and, uh, you know, answer questions. I mean, certainly that thing of being able to have elevations with um, some nice textures on it has been, you know, well, why can't they do that? You know, it's there in 3D. Um, now, let, let's just take a look at the... Um, and by the way, I did ask earlier, how many of you have access to 25? I'll change that question. How many of you have actually dived into 25 already? Um, and just, you know, please put that in and say if you've had any serious questions or challenges or, you know, things that you're really enjoying and any of the above, um, you know, that would be good to know. Uh, so I see Chris Dvorak. Hey, Chris, use 25 a little. Okay. Um, so Ryan asks, can we know more about your guests? So Namara, I didn't really give you a proper introduction. Um, tell us a little bit about your background uh, and how long you've been using ARCAD and where you stand in your architectural career. Well, I started using ARCAD when I was in my second year of architecture school. So my name is Namara Alan and I'm uh, 26 years old. I'm going to make 26 this weekend. And I used Archicad when I was in architecture school. That was second year, which was 2015. And I started using version 18. So that's the one where I started from uh, up to the current version here, 25. I have learned a lot over the five five years, and there are certain things that uh, the experiences that I have got that uh, because as a student, uh, some things are not quite easy to make as the way you want them, especially here in Archicad, because the way it's configured is not uh, really uh, organic and free form, uh, which makes it really a challenge to be able to, to be a bit more creative in terms of uh, Concept, conceptualizing and are coming up with ideas. So, uh, but nevertheless, it's one of the softwares that I really fell in love with because of the way of how easy it was it was to approach the software. So I kept on with it, and along the way, I learned to work with its uh, advantages and uh, the other side. Okay, well, one of the things that I really appreciate because I see, you know, someone uh, who definitely has um, an inclination similar to my own um, is that you're looking to take the tool and make it do what you need and willing to experiment and, you know, create interesting ways to use the tools to get it done and you enjoy sharing it. You know, so that's something obviously that uh, I like being in front of people and helping, you know, users um, get a lot of satisfaction. So I recognized that you have skill there already, you know, at this young age. I mean, 26 
is that young? Well, it depends upon your perspective. For me, at 67, yeah, that's young. Um, but uh, you're uh, definitely going to be um, a good resource for people if you continue um, to share these tutorials. Now, I'm going to bring on Steve Nickel. Um, now, uh, Steve, you're, you're on twice because I know you have, you're on two computers with your wife, but uh, can you just bring your, um, what do you call it, uh, webcam on and uh, open up your sound line so we can say hello? Because I want to okay. give a, an introduction and a contrast here. Um, okay, so Steve, welcome. I'm not, I'm not 26. Yeah, yeah. We're... Uh, We've been around the block a few times. Um, so Steve, uh, one of the things I really appreciate with, with you is that uh, you've picked and chosen what parts of ARCHICAD are important to you. And uh, so, you know, maybe in 25, there won't be a whole lot that makes a difference for you, but you have just really pushed the limits, or maybe not the limits, but you've pushed hard to, to really make ARCHICAD deliver what you need. Uh, tell us a little bit about your work. Um, you're based in uh, Colorado and tell us uh, about what you focus on. Well, like I suppose many people on the call, we are a, a boutique residential design and uh, construction consulting firm. Uh, when we first came out, we actually were general contractors as well as uh, architectural design, and we backed off from that a little bit now. But um, our, we started out actually in the Chicago area on the North Shore, which is very affluent, and got some nice experience there and brought it here to Estes Park, which uh, just a little background on Estes Park, it's somewhat of a historic place in the world because it's the gateway to Rocky Mountain National Park. I'm sitting here about 10 minutes from the entrance to uh, the National Park. It's one easily in the top 10 of uh, U.S. national parks. And it's historic in the sense that homesteaders came here in the mid 19th century and in the early 20th century, many lodges and resort places were built for the affluent in Denver and other Midwesterners, including the, the historic Stanley Hotel, which was developed by the Stanley brothers who invented the Stanley steamer. Hmm. So when we got out here, we you know absorbed the vernacular mountain architecture of the lodges, the homes. There's many old arts and crafts like cabins, and log cabin like structures. So we um, on our website now and then our actually our signature on our emails is our we transform historic mount, mountain architecture into twenty first century living. Right. Okay. All right. I don't know what more you need to know. No, that that's good. Now um on your website, it hasn't been updated for a while. I, I don't see, you know, some of the projects that uh, we're going to look at later today. Um, and I know you've taken your um, modeling further uh, along um, than what, what we're seeing in these images. Uh, these are very old, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I can see it says copyright 2013. So we're talking about eight years ago, and they were done before then. So. Uh, yeah, so we'll see how you intricately model the structure, the ornamentation in terms of, you know, moldings and, you know, other fit out and the entourage so that uh, when you're moving through the model, you know, it feels like a really lived in space as opposed to just an architectural space. And uh, uh, we'll also talk a little bit when we bring it up just on some of the things that you don't do in ARCAD that other people do um, because you've chosen, you know, other ways to do it. I've been so, lazy in some areas, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we all have to pick and choose our battles, right? Um, and I, I know you've been very successful in business. Uh, the other connection we have is through the Architect Marketing Institute, which 
uh, many of you know, I co-founded along with uh, Richard Petrie and Enoch Sears, and we teach architects about marketing strategies and business development. Um, and one of the things that uh, I know that Steve, you've embraced is the multiple level of project um, uh, proposals where, yes, you can get the basic work up to this point for this cost, and then we'll do uh, selection of appliances and furniture in this, or we'll do, you know, surface surfaces or other construction administration. You have a bunch of different things that are optional, knowing that if people choose them, A, they get a better project because you make everything integrated and B, it's more profitable for you because it's only a bit more work, but it's worth quite a bit to them. So they, it gets profitable. So um, now I've admired how you've uh, been able to take some of the ideas again from the architect marketing saying well this one i like you run with it you know that's good um so let's get back to our 25 and just talk um there's not a whole lot to see that i can demonstrate in i will bring up our 25 but most of the changes are more subtle um and so we'll just talk a little bit uh about what I see and you know what Namar and Steve uh, may relate to with um, this. So what's new in Arcad 25? They start out with this collaborate. Well, what does that mean? Well, obviously you're designing, you have other people in your office who may uh, work with you. You may have consultants who may work with Archicad and you may work remotely, um, but you also work with consultants, you know, frequently structural or mechanical. Um, other types of consultants. So one of the things about Archicad 25 is that Graphisoft seems to have focused significant resources on how to make collaboration easier, particularly with non-Archicad people, in other words, like with Revit uh, users. One subtle point, which I'd never thought of, was the survey point. We have our Project Zero, you know, which uh, you should all understand hopefully pretty well, but it's basically it's it's the immovable point in your world and you draw everything in relationship to it and you can say that project zero is a certain height above sea level or a certain place on the earth but that really doesn't change the way that Arcad treats your your model other than figuring out where the sun might be um, based on your location uh, but this survey point allows you to coordinate more easily with consultants who are relating to a particular measurement data um, origin. Um, and so just by being able to control that, I'm sure it simplifies some of the back and forth of files. Revit and Salibri model exchange, clearly the world is not all Archicad. And in fact, you know, it's, it's pretty clear that Revit has a much larger use there um, and particularly with consultants. So if you can exchange your models with Revit um, easily, um, or import uh, things easily, then what that means is that no one has to be afraid, I'm using Archicad, but my consultants don't use it, or I'm using Archicad and, and you know, it's, I'm isolated um, from manufacturer's components and things. So they've improved this, and I think this is something that some of you will not even use, and others will use it a lot because you'll go to Revit websites for manu or manufacturers' websites with Revit components, and you'll import them, and it'll work a lot better. You know, over these last few years, it's gotten better and better. But also, if you're working with a Revit um, structure or MEP, um, you're going to be able to exchange those files. And one of the things that that uh, that they've done on a very subtle basis. When I was a reseller, which was through 2010, I remember in the last few years that I was a reseller, there was some inkling of the fact that uh, structural analysis was sort of coming closer to Archicad. In part, it was because um, Graphisoft was purchased by um, Nemechek Group, Nemechek being a major software developer for the building industry in Germany, and one of their other tools is called I think it's called Skia and it's a structural analysis tool and so there was this idea well maybe that these will coordinate with each other or maybe Archicad will just be able to do structural analysis within the program well years later 
we still don't have structural analysis within the program, but we have tools that allow it to be much more seamless as you go back and forth to a structural consultant. Now, I didn't really understand this very well at the time, and I only understand it a little bit better from the diagrammatic descriptions, but the architectural forms that we are, you know, enmeshed in that we use for design, of course, have structural function. But the structural engineer has to look at it in a whole different way. And it's their models because they have to deal with loads and force calculations and earthquake and other things are typically these lines, lines that connect node points. And the line indicates, you know, a connection and it indicates a certain load is can be placed on that. Um, and it relates to our beams and columns and posts and, and you know, sheathing and, and things like that. But it may or may not be in the top, center, or bottom of any particular element. And it may not even be centered left, you know, left, right, or, or on, the, on the axis. And so there are some new tools to say, you know what, for this particular um, prefab concrete column or beam or whatever, we're going to say that the load can be calculated best by offsetting so that it connects to other uh, structural components. Um, so if you watch the video that Graphisoft um, has, it just shows some examples of that. I can't really demonstrate that very convincingly within ARCHICAD because I just don't have a, you know, a relevant project to do. But this is the sort of thing that, let's say, not just eliminates some of the issues of, well, I can't work with a consultant using this other tool, but in fact, I'm guessing that in certain ways, um, that subject to confirmation, maybe some of you know, uh, that this is the best in the industry in terms of integrating architecture and structure. In other words, even though Revit has architecture and Revit has a structure and an MEP sort of modules, I'm guessing that they don't they don't have all of the finesse that we put in here. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but ultimately, we're um, uh, in a world where if we can speak the common language and uh, you know exchange information and data seamlessly, then Archicad can thrive and have much you know much less of a resistance in the industry. I'd be interested in if, if any of you have experimented with working with structural engineers uh, or MEP and exchanging with Revit. Uh, please put a comment in in um, you know the uh, uh, questions area. Just say what's happened or you know uh, as you tried that. And I'll just scan and see what people are saying here. Um, so I see some people talking about having started in 25 a little bit or not doing it because of compatibility issues with either the mac os um, mojave older operating system or uh, the twin motion and we will talk a little bit about twin motion um, okay some minor things like keystrokes possibly getting a little changed um, 25 installations fix some freezing problems on iMac 2019. Okay, good, all right. Um, and uh, Jay Garbarino asks you, Steve, where you get the trees that you use in the renderings. Uh, we will talk a little bit about the backgrounds that he's doing, um, but you wanna mention just uh, how you approach trees? Well, there's two different ways. There are, there are objects in uh, ARCHICAD that you can use <clears throat> that they're pretty crummy and if there's one serious serious shortcoming in ARCHICAD it's terrain modeling and modeling the exterior so that's one of the reasons we're trying to move into twin motion um, for exterior kind of views the views you're looking at in the models Eric will go through later are actually their walls on the outside of the build. Not here. Yeah, I guess there are a few of them there. Yes, there are. Okay, that mountain, so. See that mountain, that stuff right there is a wall. It's about, I don't know, 100 feet placed on the exterior. 
beyond the exterior of the windows. And uh, it's an idea I came up with looking at during one of Eric's coaching calls where he, he put a wall on the outside of a building and I think he turned it into stone or something like that. And I thought, why, if you can turn it into stone, why can't you just put a picture on the, on the wall outside of the building? They look terrible from the exterior because you can see it's a wall. But from the inside, it's great context. This is actually a photo of this site beyond. Mm -hmm. I hope so that we'll, answers the question. Yeah, so we'll actually take a look at in one of the projects that uh, you know we're going to look at a little later. Uh, we'll see that. So yeah, the answer is that you can bring in objects for landscape um, and do that within ArcCAD. You can do it within Twin Motion, and you can get certain you know, realism from that, a certain level, um, but uh, really being re able to represent a whole site context, including possibly um, nearby trees. Um, the, you know, you can have a photo background. And uh, so we'll talk about that. All right. I need to give you a plug, Eric, because Eric is the one that really helped me develop this technique of placing a wall and being able to put it in, in the right perspective and so on. Yeah, so in fact, I will just bring up, let's see, we're going to do, um, uh, let's see, I know it was interior views, it's something like that. Yeah, here it is. Um, oh, let's take a look inside. So you can see this is actually, this is one of Steve's projects. And here is a curved wall that's actually very, tall and you can see here i've mapped a picture onto it but the picture is repeating a bunch of times you have to change the scale so you end up with um, something more appropriate you can see how the subtle change there um, and it doesn't have to be seamless if uh, but ideally you know you'd want to find a way to to have these connect nicely uh, but you can also just selectively have images that look out over one picture or out over another. So that's um, in my ARCAD tutorial, more realistic interior views using backdrop photos for context. So you can look that up um, in YouTube on my channel. Um, do you see a question, Roger Schaefer? Do you feel version 25 was released before it was completely ready? Don't know. I mean, I think that um, th there are always gonna be a few gaps that we uncover uh, but I haven't seen any stability issues. Uh, you know, nobody's been saying it's freezing on me, it's crashing. Um, you know, and I think that's, uh, that would, if we had that, that would um, make me say it was not ready. But I haven't heard that. Um, now, one other thing that they're doing, and I'll just make a comment and a sort of um, a thank you to Graphisoft, is that they are starting to um, add in features during a release cycle. In other words, there were a couple of uh, point updates in ARCAD 24 where they added some new features, um, which they in general hadn't done before, probably because it required recompiling all the code and, you know, and distributing stuff. And, and that was, you know, more of a complex process before, certainly in the old days with disks distribution. Um, but, uh, you know, also the troubleshooting or the, the quality testing um, you know, they had to be very careful not to rock the boat and mess things up. Um, but they have figured out better ways. And of course, in general, on the internet, you know, it's so easy to distribute software updates. Um, and so Graphisoft has gotten better at that. So 25 marks and, uh, you know, some new technologies in terms of like the structural stuff and, and things. But if you think about their new library components, and I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit, They've got some new cabinets and they've got some new furniture, you know, some of which are pretty, you know, pretty nice, pretty sweet. Uh, but there are a few gaps in the cabinets. So I would say, you know, it, it can't do certain types of things. And I know, Roger, you asked me about one of them. Um, but that's easy to fix if they get enough feedback and, and they say, you know what, we need to add this function to the cabinets. That's easy to distribute. So Arcad 25 stable, functional, adds new functionality. Um, 
libraries, you know, they can tweak. Um, so, uh, yeah, see, John Rulon says, another idea is to paste the image on the inside of a cylinder. It is done in half cylinders. Yeah, so cylinder or a wall that functions as a cylinder, that's what we um, were using. I'm also, I also wanted to talk about something there. Uh, is that image panoramic or is just a still one single still image as if there are so many of them? Is it just one or many? Well, you have to think about the photograph that you're using. If the photograph has been treated to be a panorama, then you can map it onto you know, a surface that extends around maybe not 360, but 359 and 0.9 you know, degrees because it actually, they, you can't do a circular wall. You can only do two walls that make a circle. Um, maybe a cylinder can can do it. Um, so there are tools, as uh, many of you know, where you can take your iPhone or your Android device and point at something and then slowly move your your focus around and it's tracking it and then it's seamlessly turning it into a panorama. Or you can take a number of still images and using certain tools in Photoshop or others, turn them into something that is a seamless image if you do create that then you know you'll be able to map more continuously in this demonstration i just took two photos that um, i think maybe steve had supplied to me i'm not sure um so um so i just some right. more comments about the cabinets from hannah okay and they don't have this and that they actually do have two door options and i will show you it took me a few minutes to figure out what where are they where are they and then i realized there's something called double hung which i've always thought of as windows being double hung but double hung doors well that's you know like this um so that there's that and can you get a sink yeah absolutely there is an option for that so in fact i will that'll be one thing i'll demonstrate in 25. um okay so some issues with uh hardware from um, plugins will RK25 still need plugins to exchange data with Revit users with older versions? Don't know. Um, older versions, you know, there's always some, you know, back and forth data exchange things. Um, and uh, Buzz asks, where did you get the, to Steve, where, clarify where you got the trees shown in your exterior sketch view images? Okay, so sketch view. Um, so you had some design build process. So here's some sketch things and you have some nice um uh you know, is this uh is this come from archicad or is this actually this is pencil? called old-fashioned pencil and paper <laughs> there you go um buzz is another veteran you know some, somewhere similar in age maybe even a little older than all all of us um there um it looks it looks really good yeah um, okay, so um, let me go on down to the bottom here. So we are uh, looking at the new features and I'm just riffing or giving you some comments. So we're gonna look at the kitchen cabinets and just say what's good, what's maybe a little confusing and uh, you know what you have to know to use it. And when you're migrating projects, what do you need to know? Uh, talked about the quick shift between 2D and 3D, um, which is pretty sweet and the polygonal openings and MEP labels. Yeah, I haven't looked at the MEP labels much, but uh, I guess, you know, again, they uh, can give information that's related to the element that you're working with. And I think uh, including like the diameter of the pipe and other, uh, other things. Um, and connection improvements to Rhino. So if you work with that freeform modeler. Um, stair tool improvements, I looked at these and I went, oh, okay. You know, didn't, nothing, grab me is like, oh, this solves a problem. But I did just see a post on Archiad Talk by one of the Graphsoft people talking about an issue that I've experienced with stairs, uh, which it appears there's actually a command that fixes that issue, which I had no idea because it's, the command only shows up in the context menu if you have the right thing selected. Um, so I'm gonna try to remember to remind me to show that because it's a, uh, well, I think it, it can resolve some some challenges. All right, here is the visualization. This is the really the coolest thing. Um, you know, the ability to have your 
elevations, working drawing elevations, fully current, updated as you change the model, possibly with dimensions and note, you know, notation, and have you know the uh, surface texture similar to what you see in the in the 3D window. Um, and it looks like, and you still have control over the line work, so you can have a combination of hard, crisp edges with um, the uh, more natural um, surfaces uh, here. So we'll just look at how you turn that on. Um, there are some improvements that they continue to do in terms of working with the latest technologies from Mac or others, um, 3D rendering being faster than ever using Apple's built-in graphics um, functionality. Uh, but I haven't seen any mention that we can um, uh, deal with VR stuff um, on the Mac in the way that we can uh, on Windows. I don't think that's actually an ARCHICAD thing, but um, that'd be nice if Apple could connect up to VR headsets in the same way as um, PCs. So um, there are some new subtle things in the graphic overrides. This probably resolves some issues or limitations. Why can't you do this? and they just get slipped in, you know, um, in other words, they're just a couple more options that show up in an, ex in an established dialog box um, and new labeling options. So that's it for what they, um, you know, feature. Let's take a look in ARCHIA 25, um, which I have open and just say, I opened up 25, went, what's new? You know, uh, you know, looks all the same. I, I I don't see any new tools. Menus look the same. Now, if you are, when you install 25, you're given a choice of whether you want to bring forward your um, profile, your env work environment profile. Uh, be careful with that. While you can do that, the uh, standard profile, which you can always restore under the options menu, work environment, apply profile. So here's the architectural profile. Um, what this includes are things like the menus. And if you don't do that, you might miss out on the fact that under the options menu, there's the load manager and load combinations, which have to do with structural stuff. And under the design menu, there's structural and engineering and MEP engineering tools. Maybe those were added into 24, but they were not in 23. Um, you know, and so there are things that um, are you know, and the model check and things like that. If you're coming from an older version, you may say, well, I like my keyboard shortcuts. I like certain things um, that I've set up carefully. I always advise, and I agree with uh, Jared Banks, who's, uh, you know, someone many of you know is creates a lot of great educational materials for our kid users. Um, I agree that starting with the Graphisoft environment and then customizing it again, it's a pain, but that way you don't miss anything that they had added. Um, I do see some comments in the um, just in Slack. Thank you for using that as well. Those of you who are in my training programs. So Phil, Jester, Tom, Carol. Um, so uh, Carol points out, I'd like to wait for your template. So in other words, she's not going to start working with 25 until master template is available. I have good news on that. Um, I have done some um, uh, preliminary work uh, I'm relatively close to having a version that will be downloadable um, probably within the next week. Um, and then similar to Graphisoft, I'm planning on adding some more modular improvements in the sense that I'll have a version that'll be fully compatible, use all of the Graphisoft's new standards or revised standards, um, and you can proceed to, to work with. But there are some other things that are going to take a little longer, and I can create them and have uh, give you instructions for how to drop them into the template um, and that way we don't have to wait for that whole process to get it done. So uh, within the next week or so I'm expecting to have a version um, and if you are, um, I'm going to just uh, show one other thing, um, if you are interested in getting the template or my training courses at a discount for right now I'm offering that and the way to get it is to go to um, the uh, let's see let's see the uh, bobro.com slash survey which will take you to a little survey here where you 
answer a few questions. So it's about three minutes to fill it in. It, it helps me to understand who I'm talking to, um, what level, what your needs are, what your experience is. Um, and then at the end, you'll get access to some di discount links for you know, the uh, template as well as training. So uh, where am I getting back to here? Uh, we are going back to, oh, actually starting to say in Archicad. All right, so not much to see here, right? But um, let me go and open up sample project for master template and i'm going to open deliberately open up the um the one from uh 24 because this will just give me a chance to talk a little bit about the migration of projects in a context so i'm opening up oh actually that's a template here's a sample project um here i'm going to op launch a new instance so that we keep the blank one uh, there and i'll say open this so when you open up a project from 24 or earlier versions, um, you will get uh, an option to migrate the libraries or not. So for those of you who've been around a lot, you understand this pretty well. If you're relatively new, you may find this, what, what do they mean? What is it? Why should I choose one over the other? Um, if you simply want to open a project in the new version and continue work and just get your job done, then the simplest thing is, and let's see, is it starting up? There it is, okay. Your project will be automatically migrated to the new Archicad version. You can skip library migration if you want, and you can do it later. So we could do that, but I'm just gonna say migrate Archicad library. So this is the default, and I would recommend it for most cases. So what does that do? It loads in the new library with the new cabinets, et cetera. It'll load in the old uh, support for the older components, the older um, library, anything that Graphisoft has replaced in the libraries. Uh, they generally make things when they uh, when it, a project is opened, things that are using, let's say, a 24 window will become a 25 window because those parts are pretty much identical or literally identical except for their naming um now this this is that i don't have one component that um using in that file called the accessories i didn't see the goodies which is a free download that includes things like accessories i didn't see it available for 25 yet um if any of you know anything about that let me know i i'm guessing that that will be available you know, later. Um, so I can just say, okay, keep the data for the accessories, even though I don't have the tool. So what do you use accessories for? In this case, it was to be able to do, um, I think, uh, some, uh, I don't know if it was moldings um, on walls or if it would have had to do with the, um, the roof framing. I can't now remember now. All right. Now, for those of you who've been, you know, around the block with me before, this project should be very familiar, painfully familiar, um, maybe. Um, I'm going to drop another little pitch here. If any of you have a project that you think would be useful for educational purposes and are willing to share it with me, possibly to be adapted, simplified, um, or modified for that purpose, um, let me know. Just drop me an email. Uh, maybe send me an image of the project or something like that. Uh, because I would love to get another project that could be used for training purposes um, and set up to be an example of how, you know, a good template uh, works. So I'm inviting all of you who are watching live, as well as those of you who watch the recording, if you'd like to help out. Now, here's a project we're just seeing a floor plan. And if we go to, um, you know, the 3D view, it'll look exactly the same as it did in 24. Hooray. So really migration in the, in the simplest form is just open the project in the new version, allow it to migrate libraries, and then save it under a new name. So what I would do, um, I'll just go back to the floor plan, go to the file menu um, and say save as. Now, if I said save, it would warn me, it would say you're about to overwrite your 24 file with a 25 file. You won't be able to open it in 24 anymore. But if I do save as, I'm just skipping that step and I'm just saying, I wanna save it as, well, the default is just a solo project as opposed to an image 
of the sheet or a DWG or something like that. So I'll just say save that and I'll be saying AMT24 sample project in AC25. Now it's optional what you call it. If it's the Smith House, you can just say Smith House. Um, you can have a date on it. Uh, you could just copy the old file and put it in a folder called archive or you know version 24 of the project and just keep the same name. Um, but in this case, I will um, you know just say save this here. Um, now this project has some external files that are linked to it. Um, these are used for a whole kit of parts, which I'll you know briefly show you as part of today's session. One of the nice things about um, uh, 25 is that it did not complain about uh, these, and in fact, it can these can be updated even in the 24 version, I believe. I don't think it was requiring you to be using 25 for it. Um, but I'm just going to continue anyway, meaning I'm saving the project even though um, I haven't updated uh, the these extra components. So I can now continue to work. You know, I can you know select. Uh, walls and you know stretch them and you know do do whatever I want so it's it's a you know normal live um, project now it's in 20 AC 25 um, now let's look at the library components if I select this cabinet here kitchen cabinet and I open it up it says that it is um, a double door kitchen cabinet um, which is uh, linked up next on one side to another cabinet, so there's no line there. Uh, on this side, it's a hard edge against the wall. Um, so this is a 24 cabinet. It is not automatically switching it to 25. Now, we'll talk about why that is in a moment. Um, now, if I look at this refrigerator here, it says refrigerator side by side 25. So it automatically migrated it to, you know, a 25 Part. Now, by the way, if I switch from the search view to the folder view, then we'll see that the refrigerator 25 is, you know, in the folder that has other appli similar appliances, um, you know, for, for that. Now, if I go back to the cabinet here and I open this up, now this cabinet-based double door is all by itself here. Now, why is that? Because Two reasons. One is it's in the migration library, so that means it's um, it's not in the current library. It's in the support library. And the other thing is, even if I get into the actual folder in here, casework, it's literally only showing this part. Why? Because they don't allow you to proactively select an old library part one that's been replaced in the library. We can't see this. Now I'm gonna show you that in this same Casework 24, if I go and select a wall cabinet like this one, um, like uh, this one here, it's gonna be in the same folder, the Casework 24 folder, but I'm only seeing that one. So this is something that I disagree with Graphisoft in the sense that if you're gonna have all of these old parts available, to support projects that move forward, you should also make available, if you wanna to continue to use the 24 cabinets, you should make it possible to do that. They, you know, they have their reasons, they want people to move forward, but given the cabinets are challenging um, there, it can be um, a bit of an issue for all of you who are migrating. And so what I'm going to suggest is, and I'll see if I can do this very quickly, is um, loading in the 24 library and extracting just the parts that are, um, what do you call it, uh, that you want to be able to use freely and not be restricted to the migration library. So the way we're going to do this is go to the file menu, library manager, and I'm going to say, that in addition to the 25 library and the migration library, I'm going to add in the 24 library. Now it'll give me a warning saying that, uh, let's see, Arcad library 24. I don't think that I can really dial down into the cabinets here because it's part of this object library 24 single library container file, but I will use this 
Um, and it says, you're about to load this. It'll create duplicated library parts. To avoid this, shoot, click consolidate. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to load anyway. Um, so it's sort of a special, um, you know, somewhat advanced technique. Um, I'll say reload. I'll, I'll just say OK, and it will reload it. Um, now, what we'll find is then I will have act, I will have a report. It'll say that you know you've got duplicates, you've got things that you don't need, but I will now be able to access all of the 24 cabinets. Um, so we'll just see. It should shouldn't take too long. Now let's see if anyone has any questions or comments about this whole migration of libraries. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, goodies 25 int version available. Okay, great. All right, I'll have to check again. Um, oh, and Jeff, okay, so the, the goodies are available. So either I wasn't looking in the right place or it's come out in the last week since I checked. Um, okay, good. I'm glad to see that. Um, all right, so uh, now if I go into the cabinets, you can see that I'm now seeing the double door cabinet here, along with all the other ones. And in fact, it automatically switched to the 24 li full library um, that I had used. So now I have access to all of the kitchen, the old kitchen cabinets. Um, so this is a, a will allow you to you know, select things and use them more freely. Now, if I wanna clean up the library management um, here uh, a little bit further, and this this may or may not work right the first time. Sometimes I have to experiment. I'm going to go into the Archive Library 24 and click on the button in the upper right here that shows me the contents of it. And we can see that there are that here's the Archive Library 24 LCF or Library Container File. It's a single file that is organized internally with hierarchy. So if I go, I don't know if it's under Furnishings, Casework, here. Okay, so. I'm going to just make a guess here that this casework folder is self-sufficient. In other words, it's not requ doesn't require anything else. I don't really know, but I'm going to now, with this selected, export it using this little save button, and I'll put it into my AMT, actually AMT25, um, and I'll just export it. Now, what is that doing? It's basically taking part of that library, saving it out as a folder. And now I'm going to go in and in the libraries, I'm going to add it. So in AMT25, I'll add the casework thing. I say choose that. And now I'll get rid of the library 24. Now I, I might need to go back and forth a bit. This is sort of a quick ad hoc demonstration. Let me just say remove the 25. So now I've got the 25 library with the migration one, and I've just got the folder with a bunch of these cab the cabinets and let's just say okay and let's just see if they work because um, now I won't have as many duplicates um, and it didn't even complain saying you know you're loading something um, that has a problem so let's just see if that works and uh, is what I want to be able to do is just freely use those old cabinets until I'm comfortable with the new ones so if I now go to the object tool Um, now, I know, Steve, you haven't tried 25 yet, and Noir, I think you said that you hadn't gotten access to it yet. Oh, you have a trial version you were playing around? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, in the international version, they may not, they may have already had these cabinets. I'm not sure. Did Are the cabinets new in 25 for you, or have you looked? I did not see something any different so to say but uh of the only new things that i did notice were in other objects not necessarily cabinets i don't know okay so they do have some some new parts okay all right well anyway this is a, a way that uh, i'm not having a whole bunch of duplicates but i do have access to all of these unlike in the migration libraries going into um the migration libraries uh interesting concrete metal it's interesting why i'm in the object tool hmm. okay this may have caused some some 
confusion because it's not showing all of the standard migration libraries. I'm not sure what I did there. So I may have to refine this uh, process, but the main thing that I wanted to show is that we now have access to all the 24 parts if we want. Now let's look at um, just in terms of the new um, objects here, if I go to the, the new cabinets, so we have casework 25, and we look at the base cabinet block, all right? So what they've done is they've basically made it, um, the, you know, the base cabinets, one group, wall cabinets, another group, um, and some standing tall cabinets in a third group. Um, they've simplified them down to just their basic forms. And then within the form, you can add things. So let's say that we wanted to turn this one, which is a, um, and I'm just gonna show you on the plan, rectangular, which is different than this one, which has you know, an angled end, or this one, which is a corner situation. Uh, let's put this at zero, so it's gonna be its uh, normal orientation. So this is the one that you would use for a simple cabinet, single door or double door, just a plain countertop or with a sink, possibly with a backsplash or, you know, whatever you call it. There's another term that people use in, uh, what do you call it in the back, um, up, up, up something, um, Namar? You know, when you have the uh, the countertop, you have something behind it. Backsplash. Behind it? Oh, you're saying? Yeah, well, we call it a backsplash here in the U.S., but in Europe, and I imagine possibly in Africa, they have a different term for it. I'm not sure what, 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 what. Oh, okay, well, when say. you look at it, you'll go, oh, that, right, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it, this in twice. I'll just do it off to the side um, and I'll say unlock that layer of furniture here um, and I'll put it in twice. Now this one I'm going to make bigger. So I'll say that instead of being, um, uh, and this actually floating off the ground, I'm not going to worry about that. I'll just make this um, three feet wide so it's going to be wider. Now let's look here at how this works. So this is going to be a very quick demonstration and explanation. For those of you who haven't seen it at all, just try to follow the basic through line, which is first you pick out, of course, which element it is. Is it a corner or is it a, a one that's just along a straight edge? When you do the size, are you doing it just the, the base of the cabinet, the carcass, um, or are you measuring it to the countertop, if it has a countertop, because you can turn off the countertop. I like doing it to the countertop, three feet wide, and I'll just say that this is gonna be three feet high. Now, I can change this here. This is something that's frustrating. I tried to change this to, uh, to um, uh, three feet. One, two, oh, it did change. Sometimes it seems like it, it, um, it, it required doing it down here. Uh, but in any event, uh, we'll just say that this is, uh, just give some nice simple numbers, three feet wide, two feet um, deep, three feet high. Now this is drawers. Let's say that we wanted it to be a double door, okay? So we go through to the next step. It says how many segments? One, whoop, um, sorry, let's get it back to where we were looking. One, two, three. I'll say, no, I want it to be one. All right, so that would be, looks like it's one, door or big pull drawer or something like that, which I suppose you technically could do. Well, let's say that we wanted it to be two so that we'd have a, um, a drawer under here and a, and a double door below. Okay, how do we do that? So I say it's not gonna be equal heights. I make this taller. So let's say one foot eight or something like that will mean um, that maybe um, one foot 10. Um, okay, so we've got you know, a thin drawer here. Um, and uh, now I'm gonna go to the next thing and say that the segment geometry, they're not uniform. Each one is gonna be separate. Segment one is the bot most bottom, bottommost one, and then two, three, et cetera, would go up. And I'll say this bottom one is not a drawer, it is a door. Okay, now I'll put the pull on one side. Well, and it, you, know, you can rotate this pull, we're gonna look at that. But you notice it says side hung press down here, and there's various choices, and maybe you'd want to have a top or bottom hung, I don't know, but double hung is the one that solves that problem of, I want double doors. 
say it's going to be a door type thing and it's going to be a double door okay and we'll change the handles to be you know maybe different orientation and show you different orient uh, things now the upper one here is a drawer i say all right for now let's let's do that i can also switch it if it's going to have a sink i can say that it's going to be a panel it's not openable you know if it you know something like that all right so now let's go along to the next thing and we have choices of the counter edges and sizes but here's where you can say i want to add a sink see how a sink just appears i want to add a tap here and each one of these you can either click on the button here like go to the sink or you can navigate you know through this whole process to um, select it so how big what type of sink maybe i want a you know a double uh divider one maybe i want the sink to be a little wider like this so i just put in a different dimension see how that gets wider and you can change the depth and its distance off center this is a little confusing here this is left to right center so if i put in say six inches it's going to move one direction side to side you can see so you can offset it from from the center of the cabinet and the same thing with this one which moves it front or back from its base orientation now the height of the sink how deep is it you know there's that um, all of that and there are other options you can explore um, including different shapes um, there um, and the tap you can choose you know what style could you try again no i won't bye siri um, my, my apple watch thought i was talking to it all right so here's how you get a sink here's how you get a double door um, there um, and of course can adjust it and so you do have all all sorts of other controls here including the front panel here and you can choose by clicking here or um, on that you can choose what is the um, panel style uh, you know they uh, you can have ones that are um, you know framed and different things now frankly these are limited they're I think that they should have some more but you do have an option of changing it to a custom panel you can see all of a sudden this disappears because I have to create and then select a custom panel and that's how you would get certain other types of effects um, but if you just wanted something a little bit more you know well framed um, then you can do it that way so those are that's the main functionality um, here the other things that i found surprising that took me a while to figure out are the representation is where you can easily see um, uh, the all the materials so in other words you want the um 3d representation we want the countertop to be um something uh like a marble let's see what you have stone finish marble carrera white or something well, let's get something a little bit more um marble pink um now well, i don't know there's some here's a uh, granite shiny okay that has it has some texture a little bit more visible now the backsplash you were uh, namar you were a little confused and and let me just say let's go back now to the are you talking about the rear the behind part of the yeah okay so here under components i choose do i want a backsplash and you just barely see something there if i click on this i can then choose hey triangle i've never mm -hmm. seen a triangle one here in the us but maybe it's common in other ones it's a wedge I'll say no. I want it to be um, rectangular. How deep? You know, three quarters of an inch or whatever it is. I can put it on more than one side. You can see how we can make it, um, you know, a corner condition um, there. We can change its height. And then once we have that, um, we can go back to the representation and say this um, surfaces. Uh, the backsplash is going to be whatever. Um, uh, we have uh, stone finish granite uh, shiny here. Um, so now we have that. All right. So that's a short tutorial on these two. We'll just look at them again. It's the same object. Whoops, I hit the wrong thing. Um, it's the same object with different settings. Now, because they're the same object, we could go and select these and say i would like to change the cabinet from white you know to um you know pale blue or something like that um 
So that changes the cabinet. I could change the doors. I can, you know, all of those things are, um, you know, available. Uh, and by the way, the, the handles, if I don't, wouldn't necessarily put them there. Um, let's just go to this one and we go here to the knobs and you can choose like a, a little, um, you know, pull tiny knob um, and there are different shapes for those. We can have the linear or different different um, longer ones and then we can change the orientation here to vertical and you can see there and then you can change where it is in space if you want it to be you know let's say vertical position a little higher um, for to make it easier to pull so that's where you have those um, choices there um, any questions? Let me know if you have questions on this. I, I hope hopefully that resolves the basic question of how do you get a double door and how do you put in a sink? Um, and you know, just what's different here. Uh, now, Roger asked, what's the best way to migrate cabinets from 24 to 25? And the answer is there is no best way. You can replace your cabinets with 25 cabinets once you get familiar with it and you know you know you have a, a grasp on the options you can do that but there's no way to just migrate it I've tried doing the syringe you know um, where it, it's trying to keep the sizing and the sizing doesn't even come across um, so the best way I've done it in in master template is to just get a cabinet the way I wanted it then duplicate it just like I did here but change the style all right this one doesn't have a sink. This one, you know, has, um, you know, is a corner cabinet, etc. So you drag a copy and then you switch it to a different, maybe a corner condition, things like that. So let's see if there's any comments or questions. Namar, Steve, um, anything there? Um, upstand. Thank you, Joe and Alan. Upstand. Upstand. Yeah, I knew. I knew it was. Um, it was a, a different word upstand um, okay is there a way to show opening lines on cabinet doors like you can on interior doors and windows opening lines yes there is um, you, whether you like it the way it does it or not is another question but let's just uh, do this so I'll just go in and I'm gonna leave both of these selected because this one has got doors and this one is only drawers and they have an interesting way of showing it you go in basically to the uh, representation and we've been looking briefly at the surfaces but you see this symbol type actually it's not that symbol type it's it is um, what is it it's the 2d representation um, where is it I know I've seen this it's not oh it's opening symbol opening symbol okay we don't see any change here but let's look on the plan. You see this thing here? You say it's front panel is a drawer or double hung. Well, I think because we have two of them, it's it's uh, selecting. Let's just see if I say okay. So turning on opening symbol. So this one this one does indicate that there are three drawers. I don't know whether you like that. I've never seen that. But uh, this one, if we say it's got an opening symbol and it's going to look, it'll be a double hung. And now we can see um, that. So that's available for both base cabinets and you know um, other you know, wall cabinets etc all right so that was a little tutorial on cabinets um, so Jay says knobs are not mutually exclusive between drawers and doors um, yeah there may be some limitations you have to some of the options involved saying these are not all the same you know um, Flooding and design, I'm not sure what that means, uh, Ramrick. Um, Larry says, a limitation I found with the version 25 option is the inability to do two drawers side by side above a double hung door. You're right, I agree. I could not figure out a way to do that. So if you say that we have a double door down below and then up above it's a drawer, you can't choose two drawers. Um, in fact, I don't, I don't know that you can choose two side by side. So that's an area that the library part, I would say, is inadequate and you need to either use a custom panel remember you can create a custom panel which is tedious and stupid to have to do for this um, uh, or 
graph wait for graphics up to you know do big um Romerick says bottom mounted sink best yeah i'm not sure um did you know that you can now rotate any object in the preview window without affecting the object in the floor plan now thank you Stephen. i did not know that so what Stephen is meaning let's just test this out it used to be that when you were looking at this here in 3d or whatever you might want to look at one side or the other you know or, or something from the back and you can click to you know flip this around and look at it and by the way you notice that there's a frame here it's not a simple thing it's showing actually a frame and an inset inset now this in the old days would switch this around so right now i'm looking in 3d in a back view but it did not change the orientation on the plan that's good because i want to be able to just look at it and not have it rotate and it used to be that you'd turn it around and then you'd say okay and it would be flipped thank you Stephen. um what about on elevations i'm not quite sure what you mean hannah you can explain and um you said, Bob, can you please demonstrate how to bottom mount the sink? I will if you type my name correctly, which is Eric. My last name is Bob Rowe. So Romerick, I'm just waiting for you to type Eric, okay? <laughs> All right, let's see, are you gonna do it? Yeah, there you go, okay. All right, can I demonstrate how to bottom mount the sink? Well, I am not exactly sure um what the options are compared to what you need but let's just uh rotate this around by the way i'm just clicking around the outside you can see this little arrow and i'm just clicking on it to get it um you know to whatever orientation um i want all right so in terms of the sink if we go to the sink here there's an undermount and you can see now it is here I and mean, we'd have to look at it to see in this counter overlap um, here, so this is one type, and then there's also this one that moves it to the front, so you see it. And I'm not quite sure how you fill in those gaps there, because I couldn't figure that out. Um, uh, if if you, uh, you know, so I, I frankly I haven't figured out all the things here. But let's just take it um, back to this and just say it's an undermount there. Oh, and look, it actually lost. <laughs> it lost that. Um, a drawer but let's just say that i think this is you know where um that's odd so let's go to segment details and this segment two oh it's it became open and we're going to say it's going to be a panel um there something like that okay um so that is here we'll just take a look at it where we can see it better i wish you could enlarge the um whoops uh i wish you could enlarge the um uh the preview window in the library part wouldn't that be great um yeah, come on away i'm trying to rotate this around come on now my oh my center mouse button is not working there. um okay let me just use the orbit mode there all right so okay so i'm not quite sure you know it looks like it's got a gap here maybe i'm not sure what what's causing that um uh, and yeah, it's interesting. It's like we're seeing part of the back panel um, through there. So uh, anyway, that's a, an option where you click the button and you have some controls for depth um, there. All right, let's see. Um, is there a way to show the operation of the cabinet doors on the elevation? Okay, similar to windows and doors. Ah, okay, on the elevation, I don't know. Um, we'll tell you what, we have some other things that we are on the agenda here. Um, and since I don't know the answer to that, I'll say we'll have to figure it out later. Um, okay, for double draw on double door, put two cabinets next to each other. Um, a double drawer on double door you could do that if you didn't have a sink you know um so that would be a possibility um and can you show opening lines on interior elevations um can you show caulking <laughs> oh yeah we need caulking there right uh, 
<laughs> so, all right. Um, okay, so what else do we have to show here? Um, let's take a quick look at the elevation option with textures. And I, this is taking longer than I uh, had wanted because I want to allow some time to show Steve's and also give um, Namar a, a little bit uh, more time. So let's just do one more thing that is going to be the elevation. So I'm going to take um, the elevation. So we'll go to one of the elevations here. All right, so here we have an elevation like we have had in the past. Now, uh, this is actually using a, um, did they move, oh, here. It's interesting. These are now, they resize this. Okay, I'm not used to seeing the dimensions over there when I have this palette that size. They may have resized these things. That's interesting um, to allow more things to be seen. Uh, if I uh, go to the graphic overrides and say no overrides, this particular elevation, and in fact, all of them in this sample project are set to show shading, um, and uh, which is the old style. Um, there, if I go uh, into the settings and say, what was it? It was on no shading here. And I used a graphic override that says, um, if it's a 3D element, change the foreground pen to this light gray and the background pen to be transparent. And that's what changed it to this view. Now, to get the new feature, we right click here, go to elevation settings, or you select it on the marker on the plan, and you change from, for the uncut elements, from surface color fill non-shaded to the new one, surface color, uh, surface texture fill shaded, or texture fill non-shaded. I'm gonna show you both. Texture fill shaded, da da da, -da nothing happens much. But actually, no, it, it did the um, the graphic override is actually not effective on this. So that's okay. We're getting a, um, you know, these textures, which we never had on a working drawing. Um, let's go to the, um, let's see, why am I not seeing elevation settings and say surface texture fill shaded. Um, let me do texture fill non-shaded here. Okay, much brighter. So, um, you know, there is a, a difference here. Shaded, I think, has to do with its orientation towards the sun and whether it reflects more or less light there. So uh, that's how you turn that on. And you do have some options here. I'll just do one more quick setting, um, which is, uh, do we want, um, in the model, we want lines. Where, where do we do lines? Um, vector, vector. Surface cover fill foreground. All right, I'm going to turn that off. Now look carefully at what happens to this stone here. So now it's now it's just the raw texture file that you would see in 3D. If I go and undo that change to the marker style. Um, okay, and then go back to that elevation um, here. Uh, you can see that it now looks a little weird because it's got a combination of the, the vectorial hatching and the texture. So I would use that very selectively, or maybe not at all, um, uh, because you are conflicting between, oh, well, this one we can't even see because the, the, the line work is a light gray, so it's not getting in the way, but this looks rather muddy compared to um, the uh, option that we're seeing. Go back in here. Um, uh, whoa. Um, yes, yeah, so this is now a lot cleaner. So there, I'm sure there are other variations and other things to play around with, but that's the main one where you just go, wow, that's, that's new. I, you know, if you like it, then 
please go ahead and enjoy it. So Steve, do you think you'll take advantage of that? Steve Nickel? Steve Nickel. Probably not. No? Okay, why not? <laughs> What, you know, carpenters, the, the builder doesn't need it. And it's, you know, I'd have to learn something new and take a lot of time. Okay, it's well, okay. you don't have to learn anything. It's okay for some people. It, it's just one check. It's just, it's just one one menu in your elevation. But, um, okay, so there's an attitude. And what about you, Namar? I would use it almost all the time because... Um, in, if, even before, I would use uh, Photoshop to be able to achieve the same look. So I think this is a much quicker way to get there as opposed to first getting to Photoshop. So I think I would use it all the time because, um, especially during the early stages when I'm trying to sell the design, when I'm trying to communicate the ideas, the materiality, uh, I think it would be very helpful. Yeah. Well, let's uh, see if anyone else wants to make some comments about what you think. Um, oh, by the way, so here, Merle, Merle has a comment. You can have a double panel on a sink if you choose to have two drawers before adding the sink. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll have to play around with that. Thank you for the tip. Um, and can you do glass reflection on objects in 3D model without rendering? Uh, not not directly in ArchiCAD. No, sorry, Ron. Um, can you adjust the preview in the object dialog box? Uh, you can adjust the preview. You need to close a drop down and enlarge the entire window. However, this will change when you start using the drop down list again. Okay. Thank you, Merle. I'll uh, have to check that out as well. Um, so, th this is the end of the sort of demonstrations of just the new features of ArchiCAD 25 and you know, just um, things that I noticed. I want to just briefly talk about project mm -hmm. migration strategies. Can I speak one more thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the, there's one thing that I'm not yet happy about this new feature. It looks like it's not available for 3D documents, files. So I found that a little bit disappointing and uh, inconveniencing because I thought 3D documents were falling in the same, almost the same category as these kind of drawings. So okay, that's I too wish bad. it was available. Yeah, so that's too bad. Hopefully, hopefully they will add that. Um, I'm going to go and do a quick demonstration of, um, uh, let's see, let's say show all here. I'm going to do a quick demonstration of what um, uh, you do in that, uh, Namar, in your tutorial for an exploded isometric. I'm just gonna do uh, the, you know, a very quick um, show of the basic functionality that was like, oh, never thought of doing that. Um, all right, so we've got model building in sight. Um, and actually, let me take the, my sort of standard Axo view, so we have this. All right, so we looked briefly at, this is Namar's um, ARCAD 25 impressions. I go to Nalatech Studio here and how to create an isometric artwork. Uh, nothing here. else in order to create. So you can see building cut in two pieces, with some line work in between and a little bit of 2D graphics and a legend. And now, uh, and Namar does a great job of explaining it. So I'm not gonna be showing the whole thing, but I just wanna show the one key thing. It was like, oh, that's very clever. And let's look at that. So if I go to the view menu, 3D view, uh, see so it's elements in 3D view, and I turn on 3D cutaway, or just use the keyboard shortcut command or control Y, which is the last letter of cutaway. And all of a sudden I have these little scissors here that I can bring up. And I'm gonna take this, um, I didn't wanna change the view. I mean, I wanna keep the view the same for now. Um, oh, and I have to turn back on the cutaway here. Maybe I take this one. Oh, I'm still in orbit mode, that's what's going on. 
um, take this down. Um, all right, so you can see um, I'm moving this thing that is potentially going to cut the building at that height. Let's just say I finalize that. All right, so finalize it doesn't mean that I've destroyed the building. It just means that for this view, we're looking at this um, part of the information. Now, here is the sequence of steps. You just watch carefully. You know, nothing up my sleeves, right? You know, um, no, no tricks, just a good old-fashioned use of ARCHICAD. I'm going to say save the current view. Now, NAMAR does things to change the... Uh, so it's not bright colored, it, it's more subtle and things like that, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to say that this particular 3D view with the cutaway, um, we're going to say is, um, uh, let's say, um, I'll just say uh, 3D cutaway one here, and it's now in this particular um, orientation, that particular view. I can go back to my Overall view here, I can go to the cutaway, just double click on it. Now, if I right click in empty space, I can say that I'd like to create a 3D document from this. And so we can do, I'll just leave the name alone and we'll see the issue that um, Namar was talking about is that in the 3D document, we can't get uh, the textures um, on there. And Namara, you have some things to sort of make it more black and white or, or you know, a little bit more gr graphic as opposed to trying to be colorful. But this is now a view um, here uh, that we could place onto a layout sheet. And we can annotate. We actually have all of our annotation tools. Now, here is the trick that you did that I thought was great. So I'm going to create a view um, here and we'll just say um, uh, 3D um, cutaway uh, drawing. Here. Okay, so that's, um, and we'll just get rid of this word cutaway there. Um, okay, so now I have these two views. Now, when you're in this view and after you've drawn it, you can go and say, open the 3D source. This is now back to the, um, the view that we had here. It actually is this saved view, but I can go and select this particular um, cutting plane and I can right click on it and say, um, reverse cutting plane direction. So what do I have now? I have the upper part of the building and the lower part has been removed. Well, let's go and save that as a new view as um, 3D cutaway um, uh, top, maybe just call it that. Um, and that now is, is there and I can switch between the lower and the upper there. And I can go, of course, and say, create a new 3D document. And uh, we'll just get rid of that and say um, uh, 3D cut away um, drawing top. Being a little inconsistent between one and and top there, but all right. So now I have the top and I have the bottom here, and all you have to do is place those onto um, uh, the. Um, yeah. Oh, did I did I lose the 3D drawing? Thought I'd save the 3D drawing, 3D cutaway. Um, you have, so, you have both of them. Um, no, I have the cutaway drawing one. That's the bottom. I don't have another drawing um, one. You here. you had to duplicate and and redefine it. Um, uh, 3D drawing cutaway top. That's new 3D. That's what I have here. Hmm. I ended up with cutaway top. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, so I had to create, I had to clone the um, the, the three D and add duplicate, and then you you can redefine it. Ah, okay, all right. So uh, because I changed that definition there, okay. So uh, messed up a little bit here. So we're gonna say that this one. Um, if I'm in this particular one, uh, open 3D source, and this source has now gotten there. So I'm going to redefine. I'm going to re flip this here to rotate a reverse cutting plane, put it back the other way, and then redefine mm -hmm. this uh, this one to Second be one. current settings there. 
So now we have 3D cutaway one and 3D cutaway top there and 3D cutaway drawing one. And I have the, oh, it looks like I created a couple of extra ones. So I'm not quite getting the sequence here. And this is where I really appreciated how smoothly you did everything. You know, everything just sort of fit, no wasted motion. Um, so uh, if I do 3D cutaway, yeah, we go, here's that one. And then here's, there we go. Here's the bottom ones. Let me just, um, so these are the two, these are the two. So you can basically take um, uh, those and put them onto a layout sheet. So if we have a, uh, a, new, a new layout sheet and just put one of these on here. Um, and I don't know that I have another view here for the bottom one here. This is, um, see, is this? It's, uh, it's not yet saved. It's, it's in a 3D document here. Yeah, right now. so um, let me just uh, do this uh, here, to, uh, just almost get this layout here. And uh, so right now, So you basically, um, come on out, should be able to just drag this around um, and uh, take out the, uh, the drawing title here. Come on, where is my drawing title? No title. And, uh, you know, crop this in, et cetera, and drag it. To the right orientation, and I guess we um, we can literally drag it on top of the the other one here. Oh, um, I guess drag it to there, and then you can drag it up, and you end up with this exploded thing. So I'm doing it rather clumsy, but um, and my uh, my center mouse button is not working at the moment there. All right, and that's what is the core of what Namar has done, much more elegantly, I must say. Um, so let me see if there's any comments. Um, use 3D cut for ceiling views. Is there a toggle for moving the door window out, opening line and elevations. Yes, there is a Alexis, and that is in your model view options. You can choose a model view option that does not have the opening line on elevations or that does have it. So our, now at hour 40, um, I want to you know open up Steve's file or two files, take a look, and uh, Let's just see if there's any other questions. Um, so uh, I do see comments from Carol and Ken. Yeah, the uh, um, asking about where are these questions. This, these are most people are using the questions in GoToWebinar, um, the questions palette um, for chatting. Um, but I am paying attention at least occasionally to the Slack workspace where I can see Carol and Ken um, and Tom and Jester's comments. So let's take a look at Steve. Your um, files, and let's just talk a little bit about what is so awesome about your files. So we're going to go and open the SD's library house that I've already opened in 25. So this is in 25. The project was originally in, what, like 19 or something, and then you have it in 23? Correct. Yeah, okay. Tell us a little bit about the project. Now let's wait for it to open. Well, I'll talk. It's uh, there's some history behind this one also. The homeowner is Pete Estes. His great 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 whatever grandfather was one of the original homesteaders in 1858. His name was Joel Estes, and Pete is a direct descendant of Joel and Patsy Estes, the uh, kind of a founder of Estes Park. And um, he grew up in Ohio, but the family came back to Estes Park every summer. And his dream was 
to eventually <clears throat> retire and, and build his own house uh, in Estes Park. And the other charge we had is that Pete said, I want to live in a library. <laughs> so this project is a library basically surrounded on two levels with books. There are over 500 linear feet of shelves for Pete to fill up with books. Wow, awesome. Let me just see if I can get this, um, my controls for better touch uh, here. Oh, yes, you have done a tutorial about that stair, staircase or something. Yeah, let's see. This is like, quick. This is good. Uh, all apps, it should work. Yeah, um, I don't know why I'm having problems with uh, my magic mouse middle button. Uh, maybe just restart this. Maybe that's, that will do it. Um, so, uh, yeah, this... Um, stair here if i can zoom in uh come on now uh the stair is uh you know obviously a very intricate um design um you know or uh, let's say ornate design i maybe is a better term now you did something in terms of creating it out of um an object here this is a uh, rail wooden balustrade 20 um, here, which get, gives the impression, it gives the idea of it, and you have um, each of these components as um, we're, we're done, uh, again, using some other tools. Uh, so this is not a literally one stair with one railing, um, uh, but you inspired me to create a um, uh, tutorial and I'll just find that this is going to be, give me 15 seconds here. Um, here. So this is Actually specifying the real. This is a um, tutorial on how to create a stair like this. Let's see if I can get it to uh, where we see this. So you can see here in this version of the stair, the um, it's, it's actually a stair with custom treads and with the balusters uh, nicely fitting on there. So if you do want to be able to do spiral stairs and you want to look at, um, this is like an hour long video, so it definitely goes into detail. But that's where it came from. From your beautiful design. Um, so what else about this design stands out? For me, it's the use of the textures and it's the and, and it's the fit out of this whole thing. Um, good. Now my my center mouse button is working. Good. Um, you know, so we if I can move in here, you know, it just it just feels like it's staged like it's it's uh it's a real um you know environment it, it you know the textures are so carefully chosen um tell us where you get those textures and where you get some of the things like the the rugs uh the rug was something i lifted off the internet somewhere i do not remember and the idea is to get it into a jpeg and into a surface that's a surface and just apply it to a slab mm -hmm. okay so we have a slab on the furniture layer you know pretty thin um here Three uh, we have, so we have an object flowers in vase and uh, a that's separate sketch probably sketch up yeah warehouse so you, yeah so you use the sketch up warehouse a lot to import um some of these objects so we have service you know so a, a table service sort of thing um what about the books you've got these books book cluster 25 so this is actually a standard archicad one and i guess you can probably stretch it and it'll fill yes. in more books um there um is there so a little bland 
And if I had to do this over again, I'd pick up pick up some SketchUp objects where the books look more realistic. But mm -hmm. the idea is to get it in a into a 3D model that Pete can look at and say, yeah, I like it. All right, now let me jump outside here and we'll see the um, uh, this panorama, okay? Kind of. I'm actually outside of the whole building. You're outside, yeah. Yeah. See, see how um, fakey that looks once you're outside. Yeah, so it's only good from certain angles, but you get into the right angles. Um, yes. You can uh, do a lot of cheating. Whoops. Um, so if we get get this up in the right angle, you know, it looks, looks pretty good. Um, and of course, from inside the house, you're you're seeing this real mountain landscape. Um, now let's take a look at the other file, and we can go back and forth a little bit. I'm going to open up the um, other one, so this is going to be uh, because this the other one has even more objects, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that we've you know I've, I've helped you with that you've asked me questions. Of, so let's see, let's see in downloads, um, ArchiCAD user, and 3D model May 16th. Okay, that's I think one. that's it. Yeah. So one of the things that um, uh, when I was talking to Steve yesterday, and I was you know sort of browsing the file and starting to go into like the layout book, and he says you won't find much in the layouts. I went, well, what do you mean? He says, well, I generally print out my plans and sections and details separately and paste them up on sticky back on you know on the sheets so instead of using the digital functionality that we have um, he's producing great work with the um, you know the old paste up method and when I asked about detail drawings and you know we brought up a few that uh, he said, well, there's a detail of this, detail of that. The thing that stood out to me was that these are highly detailed models so that there's very little that you have to put on there. Um, you know, you just did do it at a larger scale and put in some dimensions um, and things. So, Steve, you're, you know, you're using the modeling capabilities to represent your designs, to work out your designs, to represent them. Um, and then not really using the full functionality of the integration, but hey, you got clients who are very happy with the designs, um, and you are a master at you know the mountain design and at making the models that people go. That's nice. Let's take a look at this one. It's going to open up, and we should see some um, uh, a whole lot more furnishings. I think in this one. I mean, the other one had it quite a bit, but this one has even more. Um, hopefully, it comes up. Tell, tell us a little bit about this other project. It's an interior one, right? This is, yeah, this is an entirely interior project, interior design. There's there's no modeling of the exterior to speak of, and uh, it, it's it's from a foreign. Uh, previous client that wanted us to totally redesign her, her kitchen and master bath and give her some suggestions possibly for the living room. So this is an incomplete project in that sense, but the areas that we were involved in with design are complete. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you're doing things with you know, complex profiles. So this is done with the wall tool in this case, but with a complex profile. So you're drawing a cross section of the profile and then right. running along there. You're doing the same thing with the beam tool with the coffered. Do you call this a coffered ceiling or? or? Uh, I call it, I would call it a tray ceiling. Okay. I don't know. Good question. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you do have some. Um, um, uh, more elaborate books on here. They are yeah. back. They are backwards. That's interesting. Yeah, don't I don't, don't ask me why that happens, but 
Um, so that would from be from a far, you, from a from a distance, you can't tell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Eating the dinosaur. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. I don't think I have. Let's see if I go to uh, some of these other three D views. So you can see that. Yeah. This is. Um, uh, these were ones actually just saved that Steve had sitting in here. Um, so they're not particularly different um, saved views. Um, yeah, and in fact, that one's empty. We'll go back to the living room um, here. Take a moment. Um, so I want to see if I can find where we have, I guess maybe it was in the kitchen you had. Um, well, you have all of these, you know, beautiful. Um, uh, well, this is a project where the house is existing. And mm -hmm. uh, the client gave us, you know, like 50 nice photos of all the interiors. So the idea was to replicate those antique furnishings as best we could and the artwork and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, um, whoops. Okay, it was just, I'm not used to this project and I'm not used to navigating this way here, uh, but let's see if I can get in. That's the bedroom, that's not done. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> Because we didn't, we they didn't need any, any changes in the bedroom, right? Okay. Some of this I just did, you know, to practice. Yeah. Okay. So here, by the way, are the um, you know the, the things that are making the views outside the walls. So I'm gonna um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to get to. Let me go back to the plan and see if I can get to where I think in the kitchen or you had. Was that where we had those interesting chairs that? Um, or is that in the other project where you had the Navajo runner turned into a chair? That was the, that was the other project. Okay, all right. So we're gonna go back there because I thought that was so um, so clever. I don't know if we have any three save three D views here upper library. I think this was this will take us back into the model. Um, but uh, I'm interested in your comments or questions here. Um, so if we go down, rotate around. So I, I love just, you know, so much artwork, you know, put in here. Um, and where was, where were those chairs? Um, I think they're, uh, in the kitchen, Isla, uh, Peninsula. Yeah. And now I'm trying to get, get where that is. Do I go to the side here? No, that's outside. Here we go. Neutra book there. Okay, architectural um, there. But I'm trying to find where that uh, kitchen is in in this. Um, I'm trying to help you out, but yeah. I can't. Okay. Uh, go Left straight right? ahead. You go straight oh, ahead. No, don't go straight ahead. Uh, you got to go to the right. Go to rotate, the right. rotate counterclockwise. Okay. Um, this way. Whoops. A little more. Now straight ahead, maybe. So up in the upper level or the lower level? Oh, you you you, you want to look at the bar stools or the runners? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which? The bar stools. Straight ahead. Okay, this is getting lost. I apologize since um, I don't know the, the where things are in the project, but I had bumped into some interesting things. Um, well, the uh, let's see if I can is that the kitchen down there? No. Yeah, there are, you can see the bar stools way down there, and the runner together. There. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So what you look at this? Look at this chair these chairs and think about you know just how special that is from a design perspective you know that just this texture here and how it fits and then if you look at it closely it's actually a smaller version of this 
that Steve uses on the runner. Here. Yeah. Um, so scale down. So um, I was asking about you know where the uh, the textures come from because I think the the woods are just so satisfying. Um, if we look at the um, the surface that you're using, you've got custom ones. The, obviously, this is for the Estes project, and um, so it's Estes walnut plywood ceilings turned 90 degrees. Um, now let's just take a look at the definition of this this one as a so we go to surfaces and so SD's well in the planet so turn 90 degrees there it is okay so this is oak park k01 dark gs so this is a graphosoft texture that if i uh, go in and browse for for this it is in the standard library but an older library it's oak park k there in wooden flooring um, under Archaea 22 um, library. So you've chosen this, you know, carefully out of all the different um, ones. I was looking with Steve at the library 25 and they didn't have something that was nearly as nice. At least we couldn't find, or I couldn't find it when I was looking there. So choosing this, then tweaking the way that it treats light to get, you know, this lovely, lovely uh, effect. So let's see if there are comments from here. Um, so uh, I um, may I ask something? Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, are you able to maintain that material with, if you export to something like twin motions? So you're you're starting to work with twin motion, um, Steve. What's your experience when you are exporting your models to twin motion? I have not exported this one the the uh the other project I have and I would say it's about ninety percent there. I mean twin motion picks up the surfaces really nicely. Some of the sketchup objects it it ignores. And I don't know why. You may get the like those pillows in the living room. They came into twin motion white. And I, I can't figure out why. But for the most part it, it, it synchronizes pretty well. Okay. Um, uh, it it happens a lot. Sorry? It, it it actually happens a lot of times. I tend to lose a lot of things, uh, which makes me rethink that uh, sometimes I choose not to do some things in Africa just because I I know that I might lose some of them in 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 the twin motion. You're right. That's what I mean about the last ten percent. I don't know. It just doesn't synchronize correctly. So I'm just looking at um, uh, the details, the ones that you are calling details here. Um, so these these are um, you know taken from the model and j just some line work added um, or uh, you know some annotations um, added uh, to that. So you're basically printing these out and then pasting them up on sheets um, and. Uh, that's been working well for you, which I, I, I think is quite interesting. You had, uh, there was a section, I know we brought up a section here, let's see. Um, uh, so there is the east west section entry. North oh, you can do any of those 12s, 12 A, 12 B, 12 C. Those are sections. All right, so those are library walls. Um, so I guess one of the things that, as I mentioned earlier, that I really appreciated just is that the level of detail in the model not only is very attractive for just people going, wow, that's a nice design. You know, um, you look at this, um, uh, you know, what's going on in, you know, in everything here, it just it's very crisp. It, it, it really um, is communicating. Um, 
you know, for the builder, what all the things that have to happen. Now, you, I know there's some that you have some um, dimensions and, and things on there. Um, so, um, I'm obviously I'm not familiar with the project project enough to uh, jump to the most interesting parts of it, but I just wanted to give people a, a sense of how the drawings come out. Uh, let's see if there are any uh, other questions or comments. Um, so Jay asks, is the siding in the Estes house placed as walls? Yes. If the walls are, the exterior walls are a composite. Okay. The drywall, a stud, two by sixes and one inch sheathing, which basically is half inch OSB, half inch OSB. three quarter inch three quarter uh, siding. Okay. Um, Tom has a, a comment. Good luck keeping the lower level dry. I'm not quite sure what he was noticing in terms of just the, the way the model was. Uh, you know. That's been dry so far. <laughs> okay. We have, a, we have a good excavator. Um, all right. So uh, do you have details with more notes? Was one question from James Powers. So, do you have any details with more notes? I'm not sure what that means. Okay, so we'll just look at some. So here's some more dimensions there. Now, Steve does design build. So here we have a, 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 at least a little, little more. Um, notes there so you're managing the construction process um so it makes that a little bit easier easier to uh do without necessarily having more more notes added um now by the way is this is this uh file that i've got open has this been built yes okay. we're probably move in in august mm -hmm. okay Excellent. And uh, uh, was there more work done on another file that, uh, or did you do any more work on by hand to represent things? Yeah, we do the structure by hand. I find it just as fast as trying to work it out in uh, ARCHICAD. Okay. Engineers, um, then engineer stamps it. Okay, so James says the section is great looking, but I don't know how a builder builds that. And then says, okay, that makes more sense if Steve is actually the GC too. So, um, well, builders should be able to understand those with our help, of course. Right, right, okay. Um, so we are at the two there, hour. But by the way, there are other more structurally oriented sections. Uh, for the builder. Mm -hmm. You're saying the 12 to, to go uh, by. Here's uh Okay, so different different uh see there's no specifications there on the on the roof rafters or insulation or anything. These are more visual. Mm-hmm. Okay. But they go on the working drawings. Okay, so we're at the two hour mark now. Um, I've been taking questions as they've come in. Uh, I haven't really gone back to you, Namar, for comments. Um, what, uh, maybe just to finish up for you, um, what are you planning on doing in the next you know, year? Uh, I know you're preparing for your um, architecture exam um, uh, licensing and you're doing the tutorials. Uh, you know, just tell us a little bit about, you know, Namar and what's what's coming up in uh, the next period of time. Uh, well, I, I began Naritech Studio as a... Um, uh, this vision into the future because I'm 
also looking to create a farm from the name itself. So it's uh, something that inspired it is to also create a space of creatives around me who have the same mind and who meet you know the daily challenges that we meet here in Akikad and try to solve them together to design better buildings so uh, I intend to create more of these tutorials because I intend to use Akikad more and again I, I, ex I would love to see the, the the company grow as I also grow in my career so I intend to sit my exam sooner although because of the pandemic work was not coming in very well in at, at our local farm but hopefully uh, as as work regains we are able to, to regain the momentum and i'm able to sit the the exams for for my uh certification okay all right well wish you the best for that and i'll be looking at your tutorial videos, um, because I think that you have a, a really good style um, and we'll see what other things we can cooperate on in, in future. Um, so thank you for staying up late. It is, uh, what time is it there? It's like one in the morning? Yeah, it's 1 a.m. Yeah, okay. So thank you for joining the ARCAD user um, session today and for staying up late and then Steve it's always a pleasure to uh, talk with you and and uh, just get your perspective on um, you know what what you focus on what uh, where the money is I mean I think you create art but you also have a keen sense of you know uh, what's worth spending your time on um, and uh, <laughs> Thank you for, for your generosity and in, in allowing you know us to take a look at a couple of your projects. Even the, even though I didn't do a great job of, no. uh, of showing it, I, I think people got a sense of some of the you know design style and, and approach. Okay. No, you're thank you welcome. so much, Mr. Eric, for for having me here. I am really grateful. Uh, you're welcome. So um any last words from either of you and any comments from uh, there? Okay, so I see Buzz says, thanks, Eric, great show. And Christopher Craver says, thanks, Eric. And presenters, always helpful presentations. Okay, a bunch, you know, some thank yous. Um, okay, Sorry. James, thank you, gentlemen. So uh, well, any maybe final? The final ones that I have is, uh, I would like to welcome any of you to join the community at Nalitec Studio because I think I generally believe that you'll find it helpful because I endeavor to keep it consistent there, publishing more new content that is uh, helping, that is, uh, I believe is useful in this community. So thank you so much and I hope to see you around. Okay, yeah, I will uh, definitely be in touch with you. So Nalitech Studio, so N-A-L-I Tech Studio on YouTube. Um, and uh, yeah, some really nicely done tutorials. And Steve, um, we'll uh, continue to work together in both the Archicad and the marketing side of things. So yes. thank, you. thank you for being in my world. Um, oh, likewise. All right, well, take care, everybody. Um, I'm always open to your comments and questions. Uh, just drop a line to support at bobaroo.com and uh, you know I will definitely do my best to respond. Sometimes I get a behind, so I apologize you know for those those of you who maybe have sent something and I haven't responded, but I will do my best to get back to you. Take care and have a great day. For those of you who are in the Arcade coaching program, I will take like a 10 minute break and then we'll get going in our you know separate go to webinar link if you have uh, and for those of you who don't know about that it's um a program comes with my training archaeid training course uh, and it can be bought separately and it basically i answer questions and help people figure out challenges um so I invite you to email me if you want more information all right take care i'll be uh back with the coaching in a few minutes
拜。